So how, you might wonder, did I end up in Janesville when there were all these other communities that were losing work too? And I didn't know this community. I didn't have any family here. I had never been here. I didn't have any friends here. But I had heard about Janesville, which I had never heard about before, in 2009 when I was looking for a setting for one of the stories I did about recession effects for the Washington Post. And somebody mentioned to me that there was this community in Wisconsin that just had lost a big old General Motors plant. And I thought that was interesting, but I didn't come here at the time because this had just happened. And as you all know, a lot of people who'd worked for General Motors itself were still getting subpay. So the economic pain for some people hadn't really begun to seep in. Um, so I didn't come. But Janesville kind of lingered in my mind. And as I was getting close to getting started after I did this uh, kind of scary thing of taking some time off from my job, um, and I kept thinking about various places I could go, something inside me just kept telling me that Janesville might be the place. So why was that? Well, one reason was that I needed to find a place that had lost a lot of jobs, and you definitely qualified. <laughs> you know, I don't have to tell you, thousands of jobs lost uh, left from around here. Um, there are different figures that you can see, but looking at the Bureau of Labor Statistics figures, um, uh, in 2008 and 2009, about 9,000 jobs left this county. A lot of jobs. And if you look at what happened to the unemployment rate here at that time, in June of 2008, when the announcement was made that General Motors was going to shut down production eventually here, unemployment rate was 5.4 percent. In March of 2009, a few months after the last of these jobs disappeared, unemployment had shot up to over 13 percent. So on the job loss front, you were a winner <laughs> or a loser. <laughs> Beyond that, I had the sense that I wanted to tell the story of what this big recession had done. So it was important to me that I find a place that had not previously been part of the Rust Belt. Because I didn't want to find myself writing about an accumulation of economic decay. I wanted to show what one bad economic time did. So Flint, Michigan was an old story. And I wanted to find a place where economic was tr uh, trouble was new. And obviously, the General Motors assembly plant here had been shrinking a little bit, and then a little bit more and a little bit more over a couple of decades. But it always got a new product. So this closing uh, was really a very different thing that nobody in town had ever experienced. And that was very appealing to me, not that I was happy for you, but very appealing to me um, as a place to potentially do this writing, do this, uh, this uh, talking to people about what was happening in their community. You know, and I had the sense that no place is exactly like every place. But as much as possible, I thought it would be interesting to find a community to write about where the pattern of job losses matched pretty well the national pattern of jobs that went away in this great recession. Uh, so if you think about what happened nationally, the largest proportion of jobs that disappeared were in the manufacturing sector. That was true of Janesville. Uh, a lot of the jobs that lo were lost were jobs that had paid pretty well, but had not required a lot of higher education to get. That was true of Janesville. More men than women lost jobs in this recession. That was true of Janesville. So I thought that this was a community that had a number of the qualities in the lost jobs that other people around the country would understand and could identify with. I also had the sense that Janesville might fit nicely into the sweep of history. I remember the first time I found a YouTube video for a speech that then Senator Barack Obama gave at the assembly plant in February of 2008. I don't know if any of you remember him coming. And I remember the first time I listened to the video saying, the promise of Janesville is the promise of America. And that line gave me goosebumps, because I heard that YouTube video a couple years after the assembly plant closed. So there was an irony by then to what this presidential candidate who became president was saying. And of course, Janesville had been part of um, the sit-down strike of the 1930s. And the assembly plant had been part of the domestic uh, war effort in World War II when the plant stopped making vehicles and started turning out uh, artillery shells. And of course, Parker Penn had been from here. And it had its own big moments in 20th century history. So I just like that sweep of history. And of course, before I knew anything about this community or had met anybody here, 
I had the sense that I might find some interesting politics. I just thought there might be something interesting about an old UAW town that was represented by Scott Walker in the state governed by, uh, represented in Congress by Paul Ryan in the state that was led by Scott Walker. <laughs>